What's going on, guys? Hey, I just wanted to um, check in with you guys this week <clears throat> and uh, wanted to touch a little bit of a topic that I think is very common, but a lot of times people just want to know certain things that I do. Like some of the questions that I get oftentimes is, well, what do you think about this? Or what do you do about this? Or How, what's this look like, like in your life? And one of the things uh, that people are often interested in is prayer. Um, there's a lot of things that are powerful that can happen in prayer. And prayer is an incredible thing that God has given to us, paid for by Jesus for us to be able to have fellowship with God. Um, God hears us. God answers prayer. Um, he's listening intimately. He comes alongside us in prayer. And it's just a powerful thing. And I think for many people, depending on your background depending on, you know, where you come from and things like that and the development of your life as a youth into your adulthood. You know, no matter what stage of life you're in, everybody comes to certain parts in how they approach and look at prayer and how they're impacted by it. And I want to speak to the person who maybe, you know, this I guess this episode will be somewhat about the person who this might be encouraging or reassuring for somebody who feels like they're good at prayer, uh, for lack of better terms. Um, but I want to speak to the person who feels inadequate in prayer or lost in prayer or struggling in prayer in some way. Um, prayer is about coming before God and spending time with him <laughs> vocally uh, and in silence too, but we get to talk to God. God hears us. And um, there's many things that you can do in prayer, uh, but many find themselves struggling on feeling adequate with their prayers, meaning they feel like they haven't said enough. Um, they're upset because they didn't say enough. They're confused because they don't know what to say. They're confused by the inconsistency of the, their prayer life. They're struggling with the lack of direction of their prayer life uh, or the inconsistencies of that. They're intimidated or moved a certain way by other people's prayer life. And they just uh, simply lack a certain level of intimacy with their prayer life that they want but might not know how to get. So I want to tell you guys how I pray uh, for the most part. Now, granted... Everybody should open themselves to being able to freestyle in prayer. And by freestyle, I mean say what's on your heart, sit there in silence, think about what you might want to say, say it, be impacted by something that went on in the day or in the week that now you feel compelled to speak on, interacting with a friend or coworker or somebody who then moves you to speak on something in prayer. Or even to just spontaneously be moved to pray about something that comes to you in the moment. Uh, now, all that being assumed, um, this is kind of the direction that I like to take my prayers uh, in a very formulaic way that I feel is very helpful for my own heart. It gives me checkpoints to acknowledge. They're not requirements, but they just always help me both when I'm struggling for what to pray uh, and also when I get too lofty in my prayer to kind of dial back into checking, okay, am I accomplishing what I want to accomplish in my prayer and not just kind of being a noisy gong? We don't want to be the type of prayers that just say things for the heck of it. We don't want to just be the type of prayer that when we pray, we're trying to get a reaction out of people. We're trying to make people feel a certain way. We are coming before God and making our requests known to him, along with a few other things. And I want to just say some things that have been helpful for me, and hopefully they help you guys. With all that backstory out of the way, let's get into it. In no particular order, um, one of the things I love to do in prayer is to acknowledge God for who he is and what he has said he is. Um, God, you are almighty. God, you know everything. God, you know our hearts. 
God, you created everything. God, nothing is bigger than you. Um, God, you are honest and kind. You're always truthful. Um, you reign on the throne. Things that you read about God in scripture, it's very nourishing during your prayer to acknowledge him for such. Sometimes it can be spontaneous just to kind of guide you. Other times it can be very direct. God, I know you know all things. And so I pray that I could be at peace with not knowing everything because I know that you know everything. That's a very intentional, applicable moment where the truth of God is now reassuring you in your prayer out loud and guiding you in right thinking about who God is despite where you're at with God in that moment. So you might be struggling with, I don't really have peace or I'm struggling with anxiety or trust issues, but I know that you are trustworthy and that you know all things and that you have will for my life. And so what you are going to do, you will do, and you see everything that I don't. So help me to be this or that, or to have this type of thinking. That could be very helpful. Um, God, there is no thing bigger than you. Uh, so I pray that these problems that seem so large to me help reassure me to, to believe and walk out in my life in a way that acknowledges that these things are small compared to you. That's a great prayer that's led by truth. And it was motivated by the desire to, in your prayer, acknowledge a certain attribute about God for who he is. Again, it could be spontaneous. You might find yourself thanking God for his trust, trustworthiness or for his care or things like that. But you also might find that you might very, you might want to be very applicable and name a trait of God that is reassuring to guide a prayer that you specifically have for him for something going on in your life or for your character. Um, so yeah, acknowledging God for who he is. Um, a third thing, I like to give thanks. I love to acknowledge the things that God has provided in my life. It could be so simple. It could be super detailed. God, thank you for getting my son safe to school today. Um, I saw an accident or I saw, I know that uh, something wrong could have happened, but we got to school okay and he is now in class, and I know that I don't deserve anything, so for me to have a nice, safe day with my son, I don't want to take that for granted, and thank you for that. Um, find this. I, I want to say that this kind of guidance in my prayer life really was a game changer for me because I realized that there is so many things to be thankful for uh, from God, and what it really did for me in my prayer life is I began to pray with the expectation that God's hearing me and he will do something about it. Sometimes I used to pray so aimlessly, not knowing what God was listening to or responding to, simply because I hadn't reminded myself of the various things that he accomplishes. Secondly, when you acknowledge one or two things, you begin to see just how intimately involved God is with your life. He is blessing us in abundance. There's no shortage of blessing. And sometimes it takes humility to realize that the simple things in life are not even guaranteed and they're undeserving. We don't deserve anything. Um, th thanks be to Jesus for allowing us to partake in the fruit of the gospel and the newness of life that we have before us. Um, and yet, uh, even unbelievers have things that they could be thankful for uh, before God in prayer. And so it really unlocks um, a sense of awareness, a heightened sense of, oh, wow, what is God doing in my week? What has he done in my day? And just simply thanking him for anything can be a great director of prayer to reassure you that who you are speaking to is somebody who answers and delivers on prayer. He's reliable. And that changes your whole mood in prayer. Now you're praying with direction. Now you're praying with, with peace. Now you're praying with um, the authority of God in your life. Now you're praying in submission to God, humility to God, knowing that he will show up 
and that it's reliable. You're not just giving lip service to God in prayer because you know it's something good to do. Life begins to take part in that prayer and it gets invigorated in a unique way by giving thanks to God. Another helpful tip is to write down huge things or specific things that you've prayed for write them down on a piece of paper and throw them in a jar. Whenever God does something where you just, oh, I know this is God and he really showed up. I really needed him right here. And he came through for me. I call it like benchmark faith. These are moments where you look back and you know it was God that showed up in a big way, write it down and throw it in a jar. And any time in your life where you feel like not you're not near to God or God is not near to you, you go to that jar and you open it up and you say, wow, God showed up here. Wow, God showed up here. And you do that each year and you will be stunned at how many things you forgot that God did in your life. And it, and it will also impact and shape your prayer life in an amazing way. Lastly, uh, your needs. Bring your cares Cast your cares before the Lord. Um, God hears our prayers. Um, the Spirit is amongst us in prayer. Um, your prayer life can be so active. Come before God. Ask Him for anything. Ask Him for something so specific that he, only He could provide it. Um, ask Him for the things that are commonplace in your day that you know you don't deserve, but that He provides them and thank Him for it. Um, but whatever your cares are, whatever is concerning you, whatever is troubling your mind, whatever your need is, whatever your long-term needs are, whatever your short-term needs are, take all of that and give it to God. You do not, you could exhaust yourself until you're pale in the face of casting your cares before the Lord and he'll listen to all of it. He may answer all of it. Um, and he cares about all of it. So um, what a great opportunity that we have to exhaustively bring every care before the Lord uh, that we have. Now, obviously, you might want to prioritize what's very important and kind of treat the list like that. But just know that you don't have you're not limited to what you can ask God for uh, in your prayers or how much you can ask God for. There's no limitation to the amount of prayers he can answer which is just so encouraging because once you really start to set your prayer life on fire, you'll realize that there's just many things that need prayer in your life, in your friends' lives, in the government, in the world, all that. And that will require time. Uh, and you certainly have that time with the Lord. Uh, he's not rushing you to say, get done with your prayer. Again, we don't want to be a noisy gong. Understand where you're at when you're praying. Are you praying by yourself? Are you Don't be the person at the dinner table with the 30-minute prayer. Understand where you are. You're about to eat dinner. The dinner is getting cold. You might want to have some type of awareness about the length of your prayer. Um, don't be the person where you feel pressured to give the long prayer just because or just because of who you're around. Your prayer can be simple and straight and to the point. Maybe it's something along the lines of this. God, thank you for my day today. Thank you for waking us up and keeping us healthy. There's something of uh, giving thanks, acknowledging God. God, thank you that you reign supreme. Thank you for saving me. Uh, there, there's giving thanks. Uh, thank you for being almighty, acknowledging his character. That's the second thing that, I, that guides my prayer. By the way, Lord, I pray that today we would live in a way that's glorifying to you. Amen. There's the, the checks, the three boxes you gave. Thanks. You acknowledge God for who he was and, uh, and, and you submitted your needs, your cares for the day. And you could add to that. If I, if I did one thing I'm thankful for, one thing about who God is and one thing I need, you could go two, three, four, five, six. You could exhaust that list. But again, those are the three checkpoints in my mind that I like to walk through. So even if I'm going to say a very simple prayer, I typically like to acknowledge at least one character trait about who God is, um, cast my cares to him and also give him thanks. I'm interested for you guys, what your prayer life looks like and what have been some helpful things 
uh, that can guide your prayer life, please put it in the comments or DM me and let me know anything special about your prayer life that you feel like has really set it on fire. And lastly, I'll just say this. Um, that, that whole thing I just shared is what I do. Um, now, what I will say is, is I do think it's important to read what scripture has to say about the father's involvement, the son's involvement, and the Holy Spirit's involvement in prayer. Who is at work in the prayer and what role are they playing in that activity? Because it'll further inform how we think about our prayer life, who we're acknowledging in our prayer life, and just it'll it'll make the prayer life more robust. We never want to do activities in the faith without being informed about what God has said about those activities, if he has said something about those activities. And there's plenty to be said about what Jesus has paid for in terms of our interaction with God, what the Spirit is doing in our prayer life and uh, in terms of that fellowship and what that looks like, um, what the Father is doing uh, in, uh, in our prayer life, and we can acknowledge those things and be informed of those things so our prayer life can really thrive. I hope this video was a blessing to you guys. Um, yeah, let me know your thoughts. I, I'm interested to see uh, how people get down in their prayer life. I know I've really benefited from some of the things that I've picked up, and uh, I pray that uh, you guys, maybe you picked something up new today that you hadn't thought of or heard before that could set your prayer life on fire. Uh, with that being said, guys, take care. God bless.